What's up and welcome to Mic Check by Dove Delegates. As you can see, we got a studio packed full of people, so it's going to be a great conversation today. Uh, before we jump in with introductions, I just want to get some announcements out really quick. So, over, y'all remember last week, I mentioned a program over at Newburgh Community Center, and it's still going on, like I said, until the end of May. So, we got shirts with a purpose. Kids will learn to design, create, and press their own shirts. Ages 14 through 18 is the age range of people invited to come and make a shirt. Again, it started in April, but we're going all the way through to May 30th. From 2.30 to 4 p.m., you can come in and make this shirt. Um, like I said, located, oh, I'm going to get this address wrong again, 4810 Exeter. Exeter. That's it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Exeter Avenue. Y'all know what I said last week, Exeter. <laughs> so for the first four weeks of the program, um, it's going to be reserved for girls and women to go um, and go get their shirts done and get some special care there. And then for the last four weeks, they're going to end off with the, uh, with the men and the boys. And then at the end of the program, there's going to be a group trip to uh, the Roots Museum. So Make sure you go pop up over at Newburgh Community Center. Ask for Miss Jessica around 2.30 and go get you a shirt made. And then for my second announcement, shout out to the Kentucky Derby, Fe Kentucky Derby Festival Block Party. I don't know what I was about to say, <laughs> but my girl Chanson was there promoting her piano and vocal lessons uh, for ages three and up. Beginners piano. Vocal ages are ages five and up. If you need more information, um, you can contact EnchantedLouisville at gmail.com. And you can also call 502-956-3132. Rewind this back <laughs> if you need that number again. All right. So let's go ahead and get into our introductions. Y'all already know me, Amira. How's it going? Y'all already know Nigel. Nigel, say hi to the people. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? I think they're doing good. <laughs> I answered on y'all behalf. Now let's look to the back of us. What? Matching t-shirts? What? We we didn't get the memo. I didn't know. I was offered a shirt. Last, I turned it down. <laughs> I'm going to get it after this, though. All right. So starting from my right, let's go ahead and go down. Oh, no? Too soon? Well, you know, if we start at the other end, that's probably way too soon. Okay. Right? It's okay. I'm good. <laughs> um, hi, y'all. I'm Red. Um, I'm 17. Um, and that's about it. <laughs> That's about it. Nice to meet you, Red. Okay, next in the middle. I'm Demetrius McDowell, founder and CEO of Bosses Not Bangers. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> Changing sure. the perspective of the youth in our community through entrepreneur mentorship and mental health. For sure. Bosses Not Bangers. <laughs> and then last but not least. I'm Tamika Holly, and I'm just a mom. Just a mom. You're not just a mom. You the love, mom. The Ooh. mom. Okay. Ooh. It's the support for me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's giving support. <laughs> All right. So as you heard, Demetrius is the CEO and creator of Bosses Not Bangers. Demetrius, take a second and tell us a little bit more about Bosses Not Bangers. It's a proactive versus reactive. Mm. Uh, definitely teaching our youth and young people to be individuals it's an identity right. crisis out here right. and a boss, boss is a title you have to come with responsibility dedication and definitely being your own person versus mm -hmm. a banger which mm -hmm. is validated by a group so mm -hmm. boss is not bangers Boss is not bangers i like the preventative measure um because i feel often we are creating organizations out of the reactive like when you're in the reactive status like oh now we need this um but Prevention is what we need, and prevention and preventative measures is what I feel the city needs to, uh, like, as a whole, like everyone, like exactly. all of us together, we need to learn how to create these initiatives or these programs that are basically going to stop it before it even starts. And that's hard because a lot of stuff has started. You know what I'm saying? A lot of stuff has popped off, but it's still not too late to to get in front of wherever you need to get in that's front of. That's how we stop it in this train. Boss up. That stops her. Boss, boss up. up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like that. So you're going to get another shirt that's just going to say boss up? Oh, oh, let's see how this goes. Let's see how this goes. Okay, okay. <laughs> Baby steps. Look at me. Oh, we, I'm squashed the beef. we squashed the beef to get the money. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yay. Yay. okay. As a co-worker, if you work with some people you don't get along with, mm -hmm. 
You gotta let go of some petty jobs to get go. your paycheck. That's real. That's squash true. the beef. Get your money. That's gonna talk to yeah. kids. Oh, yeah. money. Yeah, most oh, I have money. to squash the beef to get the money? <laughs> okay, depth. I guess I could do that. <laughs> Boom, conflict resolution. Boom. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> it's all for full circle. So, Ray. Hello. I know you said you 17 and that's <laughs> it. But there has to be a little bit more. I know you got like a favorite color, um, and, like a family, or well, you go to school, right? <laughs> <laughs> I go to Southern High School. Okay. Um, I'm a junior. Um, I am the president of the junior class. Ooh. Uh, so, I mean, she said, that's, that's, it, that's, all. Right. <laughs> that's a little bit. That's a little bit for y'all. My favorite color is black. <laughs> Period. Mine too, y'all. Mine too. Okay. What does the president of the junior class do? Um, basically, we plan the. I plan with my um, you know, student council. Yeah. Um, I plan the basketball <laughs> homecoming. <laughs> I plan the basketball homecoming, like on how it will run, how will everybody get crowned, mm -hmm. um, who will walk and stuff. And I was in charge of tallying up the points on who won. Oh, in, okay. In each grade, so You're working. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's dope. Basketball homecoming. And y'all know homecomings are important. Like, I think I was nominated in high school for four things. I don't even remember. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> one of them was loudest. That's actually the one I won. The placard that I received became a Frisbee right afterwards. Because I was like, what? This is not an accomplishment. <laughs> like, being the loudest one in the school? Like, <laughs> it was whack. <laughs> But it's cool or whatever. Hi there, Tamika. Hello. You ready for some questions? I'm ready. Okay. I'm just going to ask a little bit more about you as a mom. So how many kids are you raising at the moment? Um, I have three kids. Okay. My son's 18. My girls are 15 and 13. Oh, they bowed out the house. Yeah. I have uh, my son's at Ferdale. My daughter's at Mill. And okay. My baby girl is at Florence Lee. Okay, okay. For all you male people out there, who's the who's the rival? Manual? Manual, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Lord, I am not from Louisville, but anytime someone's like, I'm from male, I'm from manual, like the next question is, oh. The rival. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or the next person so happened to be like, oh, well, I'm from the opposite school. So, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, see, I'm catching on to Louisville culture. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's dope. I'm really happy that you were able to join us. Um, so just to put it out there, we had Latoya Malone, who was going to be joining us. Um, she is with the nonprofit Unity. Well, that is her nonprofit, Unity. And she also hosts a show here with the Plug Network Online. It used to be titled The Toy Box. But I believe it's another title now that I just cannot remember off the top of my head. I think something about the best life. Something cool like that. Mm -hmm. um, so Latoya originally was going to join us today. Um, but unfortunately she had other things to tend to, not unfortunately, but just, she had other things to tend to. So we have Mika who is going to take her place and take her place as a mother joining in on our conversation, which the topic today we are going to be focusing on is listening to your kids. <laughs> listen to Ray. Ray said, yeah, we, like, listen, listen to me. It's great. It's it's great. great. <laughs> she said, it's great. Nigel, just so our guests know a little bit about you, why don't you go ahead and talk a little bit about yourself <laughs> and um, what you got going on? Well, I am a part of the Dove Delegates, Mike Check. Uh, I am the co-producer. Uh, I am a social justice advocate. I am a student at JCTC, soon to be U of L. Okay, Cardinal. Yeah. 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 Some slight, some slight. Um, <laughs> what slight? Yeah. What slight? Just a uh, just, uh, 22 year old youth. Uh, just trying to do what I need to do. So, yeah. So, yeah. Bossing up. For sure. For sure. Uh, it's big when Demetrius say you bossing up. Uh, for real. Thank you, man. I say. The boss not banker. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Boss not banker. From okay. From oh, experience. Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, That's real. That's real. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, like I said, we're going to be, thank you so much. We're going to no be problem. discussing, uh, listening to your children, uh, the benefits with that or what that could look like, how everyone utilizes that in their day to day. Um, and you know, what to look forward to, like what programs, um, are around or up and coming to support, um, such a concept. And we're going to dive in a little more, of course, Cause I know at first it's like listen to your I do listen to my kids. Well, we gonna we gonna address 
many forms and ways how to. Uh, shout out to the Dove delegates. Last year, we put on a program called Share Your World Youth Conference. And that is how I met Nigel, actually. If y'all tune in to, I don't even remember which episode at this point. Um, there's only two. So I guess the first one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's how I met Nigel. But basically with that conference, be on the lookout for it coming back either at the end of this year or next year. Um, the kids are the experts. They're the experts in their own experiences. And they got some insight and some input that they would like to, you know, you know, put in, you know, adults just listen. That was the conference. Adults were sitting and they were listening. And then the kids were presenting um, their experiences, giving their advice. And it could have been on anything, either things around mental health, um, weird circumstances with school, things they don't want to talk about in school anymore, um, other things that they want to learn, and even down to lingo and what's cool and stuff, you know. So that was the Share World con uh, Conference. I would be on the lookout for that, you know. I mean, not anytime soon, but that is what is sparking this conversation as we learned a lot when it comes to the kids are experts in their own experiences. And maybe we could learn a little bit if we just tune in to what they're saying. So with that being said, don't go anywhere. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Thank you. Listen to your youth. <laughs> the Plug Network is ever expanding. Subscribe to our YouTube page and hit the notification bell for all updates. Thank you, and stay plugged in. Years of experience with natural, carefully handcrafted products makes PK Powders your go-to for all skincare needs. Owned and operated by licensed esthetician Precious Kental, PK Powders provides a myriad of solutions to keep you looking good, smelling great, and above all, maintain your skin's health. Located 1930 Bishop Lane, Suite 101, Louisville, Kentucky, right inside the Watterson Towers building. The play is PK. Welcome back. Y'all done forgot the microphone. <laughs> Ooh wee. Okay, thank y'all so much for coming back to Mike Check by Dove Delegates. So as I promised, we're going to get into some conversation. So first, we're going to start with, well, we're going to start with Tamika on this end. So I just want to know everyone's experiences working with children. Um, whether that be, oh, same with you, Nigel, whether that be, um, anyone, well, this is for, I guess, Nigel and Red, whether they're your peers or anyone younger than you, if you volunteer anything of that nature, that nature. Okay. Me and Red just talked about this, y'all. I was all her space again. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, that would go for Red and Nigel, but Tamika, I want to know a little bit about your experience with raising your children or whatever other experiences with that. Um, it's definitely not a blueprint blueprint to um parenting. Mm -hmm. However, um, me and my kids have a wonderful relationship. Um, I leave it open for them to talk to me about any and everything, but I'm not their friend. Mm -hmm. So we do we do have that line where they know I'm gonna I'm gonna be stern on a mm -hmm. lot of situations. Don't cross it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However. I do feel like they are open to talking to me about any and everything. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. How's that made life easier for you? <laughs> it, it really works well because okay. I don't have uh, disobedient kids. They're very respectful. Okay. Um, and then having a teenage son in today's society, um, I thank God for that every day, for him to be able to confide in me and talk to me about right. anything that's bothering him. So um, I think it works out wonderful. That's good. I'm very happy to hear that. Um, I don't have kids yet, but I definitely feel that something open is uh, the way to go in order for your kids to blossom. You know what I'm saying? Because like for like thinking about me and my mom, like she'll come back, tell me some some experiences just randomly. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> what? I thought that was reserved for me to do. But you did that, too. OK, let's <laughs> talk about it, mommy. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So that's appreciated. That's nice to hear. 
Um, I don't know how it is for a lot of people in this world, but I know there's a lot of taboo around a lot of stuff when it comes to uh, working with kids or raising kids. And um, I think that openness and that transparency is super important. So thank you so much for sharing that. I appreciate that. Demetrius, share your experiences working with children. Um, I, I feel like it's a responsibility of mine and uh, taking accountability. And with that, making sure that they have accountability. Right. Because me as a uh, ex-drug trafficker, I know that I'm a big Influence in a neighborhood that's not positive. Oh, so, you okay, know, so okay. You trying to reel it back now? Yeah, most definitely, most <laughs> definitely. And I know that the, it's kind of you know some of the the lifestyle that some of our youth are chasing. Mm -hmm. You know the the social media influence is glorified. Of, yeah, big money and cars yeah. and women and first thing they see in their neighborhood is their neighborhood drug dealer with those things that they see yeah. on social media. So it's definitely a, a accountability on my end to right some wrongs and try to change some perspectives because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, your OG got a job. <laughs> at the end of the day, at the end of the day, kids, yeah. that's true. you got to get a job. Yeah. I mean, it could be your job. I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, entrepreneur, like, clearly. Yeah. yeah entrepreneur right here. you don't want to be told what to do, then you need to be on your, your own boss. True. Mm -hmm. And that alone, see, Red said true because I'm not to bug Red about um, their business in a second. But, um, Definitely. Uh, dang, I forgot what I was about to say. You said something about being a boss. And OK, that was all that needed to be said, clearly, like just being a boss. Oh, I was going to say it's going to take to be your own boss. That's going to take a lot of mentorship. That's going to take a lot of discipline, mm -hmm. a lot of unlearning. Yeah, your success you would say, is right? based on your network. Mm -hmm. So the many of people that you come in contact with who can share their experiences, whether it be growing in life or in business, mm -hmm. it all works together. Smart words. You want to drop a cash out, you know, in case anyone need to tip you for your gems today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 dollar sign boss. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Just buy a t-shirt. Spread Just, the message. There you go. Be a walking billboard, please. That's it. That's all. <laughs> all right, Red. What's up? So we know we know that you work as the president of your entire junior class. Okay, Mrs. President, <laughs> what else have you done working with like kids either younger than you or your peers? Um, well, so like ever since I've got to like the age of 13, like I've been going to like the Newberg Community Center after school. And like ever since then, I felt like I've had to like take on that sp responsibility of preaching to the uh, younger people that's looking up to me and steering them into the right direction and yep. um checking them when they get off task and when they get out of hand so and y'all um, hear red i'm pretty sure she actually like checks them like i, hey, do, I, no. I do and i'm i'm really gonna be real i'm gonna be real so um that is an experience and i feel like um it's a great experience um it could it got to it it has its pros and cons of course but overall it's a great experience um I enjoy getting to know each and every one of them mm -hmm. and then also for them getting to know who I am and then also telling them stuff that I went through when I was their age, so yes. which was not long ago. So <laughs> I speak on it. <laughs> At least you know, because some 17 year olds be like, I'm grown, which I well, guess you... I do say I'm grown, but like see what I say. I, I, I and probably I said am. it too. I have grown folk <laughs> tendencies, but <laughs> and I do grown folk things, but I'm still 17, so I am gonna continue to live my um childhood life. There you go. Oh, that's right. And that's all we want. Don't grow up too quick, okay? Because it's not fun over here. And I'm 30. And bills or something. And bills, uh, <laughs> bills, man. Oh no, are you okay? Man, you be having to take a nap after paying a bill. Like, let me just rejuvenate. Like, there went money. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate y'all heard she put on the boss voice. And then another thing is, like, you know, she would get into it. Thank you, Red. Yeah, of course. All right, Nigel, let me know experiences that you have working with children um, or your peers. I would say, um, you know, working with youth, like, it, it's really beautiful. Um, so I worked at a middle school called Nativity Academy. Uh, if y'all haven't, check it out. Um, but, you know, it helped me uh, realize that, you know, like, with dealing with, like, 
dealing with youth, working mm-hmm. with youth and stuff like that. Um, it's very beneficial for them and me, um, for them to get a perspective of, you know, what, like, you know, what their lives could be, mm-hmm. um, you know, what jobs they can do, um, what opportunities, like, they can create just by being themselves and being unique. Um, and then also, like, seeing, um, you know, the, tra- the trajectory of which, like, youth is, you know, going to become. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, seeing, like, you know, the beauty in, you know, what they do, whether that's art, whether that's school, um, you know, just getting to witness that greatness. So, <laughs> so articulate, both of y'all. <laughs> Where did where teach me the ways? <laughs> I, I got you. I got you. <laughs> teach me the ways, president and boss. Okay. <laughs> um, I love that y'all are giving back at the ages that you are because it it doesn't matter the age. At a certain point, you have a story and you have experiences to give. As I said earlier, y'all are the experts in your experiences, and while we do have some unique ones across the board, there something's all connected. It's not Mm -hmm. that unique to where you can't share or, you know, touch a kid or somebody's life in those areas. Mm -hmm. So congratulations. I don't know what I'm congratulating for. (laughs) Congratulations. Good job. I'm proud that y'all are doing what y'all need to for the kids in this community. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely dope. And I feel like sometimes it's easier to regurgitate or get any of that information from someone who is closely related to you, who you can look up to as a big sister or a big brother or something like that. My mom will tell me the same thing. And I'm like, okay. But when, when my bestie say it, I'm like, interesting. I, I'm telling you, yes. Yeah. I had no clue. <laughs> and I tell my mom, like, if something new I learned, mommy, did you know this is this? And she'll be like, I told you. I told you that. Just, <laughs> exactly. Like, just last week, I said the same thing. And I'm like, what well, didn't hit right? I don't know. <laughs> So, you know, it is what it is, but it's needed. Um, and there's a reason for it. And there's a reason things are the way that they are. So, awesome. Um, I want to hear, anyone can kind of jump in with this question, but I want to know what listening to the youth does uh, for you on a daily basis. Like, how does it assist you in reaching your goals or just keeping up your integrity or just being a better person or providing resources? Um, I want to know what that has done for you or how it's assisted y'all on a day-to-day basis? Well, um, I say listen to the youth. Listening to the youth uh, puts like, I don't know, like some type of motivation in me Mm -hmm. because sometimes they say things that I've never heard of from me, myself, like 17 year olds or any, anybody older than me. So Mm -hmm. it's like, um, things that they say, it just catch my eye and it'd be like, oh, okay, I see where you're coming from. And I put two and two together and it'd be like, oh, okay, you're right. And then it gives you me that motivation to keep mm-hmm. going uh, or in whatever circumstance I'm in, it mm-hmm. just gives me motivation. That's good. It feels good too. It feel it definitely feels good knowing that you're able to assist someone or it feels good that like receiving that information helps you to be, be, a, be a better mentor. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Anyone else? Well, I think uh, as a parent, we in the business of raising the best human beings that we can. Mm-hmm. So just like in business, you can't give the people what they want unless you know what they need. So mm-hmm. you definitely have to hear from your your kids, your youth, your, mm-hmm. you know, and this is what we out here for, whether it be organization or households, you have to be a, a listener more than, a you know, an, a, an aggressor or a disciplinary. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. I like that perspective from the parent. Again, I I, I got a cat, and uh, you know, <laughs> it's not much you can do there. <laughs> not much there. How about you, Tamika? Um, I just feel like listening to um, kids, it helps take the weight off their shoulders. Mm. A lot of times adults look at them like, y'all ain't going through nothing, however mm-hmm. they are. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and them being able to release that in a positive way, mm-hmm can help them make uh, a help help prevent them from making a decision that can cost them their life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I like that. I like that. Um I think that you definitely spoke on something super important regarding, you know, the assumption that kids aren't going through much. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but we are gonna take a quick break and I want to touch back on that when we come back. So don't go anywhere. Go ahead, use the restroom. Go take a little sippy sip and come right, a water and come right back. Okay. Thank you. (laughs) The Plug Network is ever expanding. Subscribe to our YouTube page and hit the notification bell for all updates. 
Thank you and stay plugged in. Years of experience with natural, carefully handcrafted products makes PK Powders your go-to for all skincare needs. Owned and operated by licensed esthetician Precious Kental, PK Powders provides a myriad of solutions to keep you looking good, smelling great, and above all, maintain your skin's health. Located 1930 Bishop Lane, Suite 101, Louisville, Kentucky, right inside the Watterson Towers building. The play is PK. Welcome back to my check. Ew. We're having a bomb conversation regarding listening to your kids. I hope y'all are learning stuff. I hope that we get cash apps in the comments. <laughs> Dollar sign. Dollar. Boss over bank. Boss <laughs> over bank. Regular words. Regular words. Listen, because these people are going to need tips for their gems. I just thoroughly appreciate them coming on the show, giving us some of their words and wisdom, some of their advice, some of the sharing, some of their experiences. Um, before we left from our last uh, break, before this last break, um, Tamika took us out speaking about um, or mentioning that kids, like sometimes we aren't considering that kids are actually going through stuff or have their own developmental crises and things happening. And um, again, I like that she mentioned that because um, I think it gives respect to a growing human being. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like it gives respect to that. Like, I don't believe in terrible twos because mm -hmm. I, I don't think toddlers are necessarily terrible. I mean, there are little people who don't know how necessarily to express themselves, who don't know how to do a lot of things. So if you're just trying to command stuff, oh, you got to show them, you got to have some patience. You know, they can get frustrated easily. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I just feel as a developing human being, um, kids deserve that kind of respect. And hopefully with the generations to come, you know, they don't end up like us all in therapy and stuff now. <laughs> like, sheesh, man, trauma is real. And I'm just like, what? Every therapist I went to, childhood trauma. And I'm like, Ugh. Oh. Childhood trauma again. It's like bingo. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and get into the next part of our conversation. Everyone has been so articulate and been doing so, so well. Omni zoomed in on my face, which is greasy. Oh, Lord. <laughs> All right. So jumping into our next question. This question is for Nigel and for Red. So I want to ask y'all personally. What does it mean to listen to the kids? What does it, what do you need to be heard on? Or what have been your experiences when you felt maybe you weren't heard? Or, you know, I feel like this is a loaded question. I've been doing that a lot lately. <laughs> Man, I'm just trying to get it all out, I guess. Um, but what, what does this, what does this mean to you? What does this sentence mean to y'all? Either could go first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a boss right there. <laughs> um, I would say listening to youth, like, it means a lot just because youth have the experience, they have the passion, and they have, um, you know, just what's actually going on. Um, and so, like, when you don't or whatever, we repeat the cycles that, you know, we go through, whether that is, um, you know, violence, whether that is, you know, the city not changing, staying mm -hmm. the same way and getting worse because they're not really listening to who's actually affected. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, like it really is beneficial to listen to youth just because, you know, they are actually like doing the stuff they're at in the streets. Um, you know, they're actually, um, you know, in the schools that, you know, are being affected yep. and everything. They, they have the experience. So right. it just makes sense to listen to youth, it especially... Does, yeah. If you're trying to make change in a positive way and stuff mm -hmm. like that, if y'all really want change, y'all would listen to youth. Um, so. I like that. Well spoken. Well spoken. I feel like many of our legislators or any of our gov governmental folks can can hear that. You know what I'm saying? It's it's basically the same concept. Like you're not listening to the people who have experience or on the ground, like you said, expert experience in their struggles. Um, and that could be something perpetuated by the system. 
um, could be something that has bled into like black culture and black community when, you know, um, don't trust nobody, but your mama and him, um, <laughs> you are to be seen, but not heard like, you know, all these things. So that unfortunately that we take and it does shape us into ways that it shapes us in an area in which we got to unlearn a lot of things. We got to go to therapy. We got to address a bunch of trauma and a bunch of things that maybe we didn't agree with as a kid. Um, or maybe we felt we should have got choices then. So red, how about you? What does it mean to listen to the kids? Oh, you ready? Let's let's get into it. So with Nigel pulling all the words out of my mouth. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So this thing that came on my mind, the saying of, I am the parent and you're the child. Mm. That saying gets thrown around. That I've hear, heard it at first hand. It's been said to me by uh, multiple people that I've grew up with. Mm. Um, I feel like that saying is just like, um, it's a repetitive thing in my head. And it's like something that doesn't, it's, it's irrelevant to me, I would say. Okay. It's irrelevant because I feel like I'm still a human being at this at the end of the day. I still have emotions and I still have feelings and I, that's with other youth. Um and also I feel like um the youth with them saying something or voicing something to their parents and mm-hmm. they speak on that uh, the parent says that there's something really wrong with the child. Um that they're really trying to get their parent to see that is wrong yeah. by you know, it may be an attitude so that may cause the parent to say that but like at the same time there's something that that child needs or wants to be brought a broad awareness about mm-hmm. that they've said um so i just feel like listening to your kids or listening to other youth is very beneficial because um like nigel said we do have a lot of knowledge about what's really going on in the world right mm-hmm. now because we were born we were born not too long ago. Right. And right. it's we're younger <laughs> than our parents. So like because we're I mean, here. <laughs> so like um I'd say I give y'all any parents watching, listen to your youth because they are saying stuff that's important. They are putting out positive energy. It may not be in the correct way, but that's something that that's uh, something you're should learning. be said, you mm-hmm. know. So that's all I got for y'all. Yeah. <laughs> well spoken. Y'all are doing great. And that kind of bled into uh, what my next question was going to be, which was for everyone, which would be the possible outcomes from listening to the youth. And I'm not saying that all the outcomes are on the positive like area, but like it's a balance usually in the world. Nothing usually is always on the positive side of the spectrum, but that's when it comes to, I feel collaborative efforts. You know what I'm saying? Um, when your kid comes out, I shouldn't say this cause I don't have no damn, no kids, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just thinking like one of my friends, she'll tell me, she told me about um, her parenting style and it very much is like choices. Okay. You don't want to do homework. Let me tell you the outcomes of doing or not doing your homework. If you don't do your homework, um, you're punished for the evening or something like that. If you do do your homework, you're rewarded with something like, I don't know, she does something like that. And then the kid will make the choice. And who knows? What, what's your thoughts on that? <laughs> no, I think no. That, I think that's a big part of the problem. Is mm-hmm. A lot of these kids are potential and... And choices on mm-hmm. things that we never had choices on growing up. Right. So right. um I, I can disagree with that. However, okay. what works for you works for you. Mm-hmm. That, that doesn't say that you're right or you're wrong because you have control of your household. Right. But um I definitely feel like um let them get it out, let them speak, let them, let them tell you how they feel about mm-hmm. what they what it is that they want to do. Yeah what it is that they want to do. However, um, I I feel like at the end of the day, the parent has the initial say. The say. So do you think that the collaborative effort could just be in that conversation? So maybe, maybe the kid don't want to do their homework because again, like Red mentioned, there's a need that needs to be addressed. Um, but instead, um, like I've experienced in some community centers, the need isn't addressed necessarily, but it's just the acting out or something like that, that's all that's paid attention to and not necessarily the need that led it there. So did I stray off from my question? So my thoughts were, do you think the collaborative effort there is having the conversations 
with the kid. Does Definitely that make have the conversation, mm -hmm. see what it is that they're having difficulties with as yeah. to why they don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. However, that's something that has to be done. You still got to do it. Yeah. But as soon as we figure out why there you don't want to no do it, it, then that's a that's a, a continued conversation. Well, here's yeah. why it's beneficial for you to do your homework. Yeah. Because X, Y, and Z. And you fun get grounded. No, I'm just playing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are some other possible outcomes when uh, other possible outcomes from listening to your youth? I think that um, definitely, like they said, you you have to give get the experiences from mm -hmm. who's actually going through it. Like right. our time was our time, but I think uh, I. I feel like I know <laughs> <laughs> that everybody has feeling. everybody has their role. Mm -hmm. And if my role is a parent, then what's your role as a child? Mm -hmm. Do you think that you do have the the authority over me at some point? I can understand how you feel. Yeah. But at the end of the day, stay in That's lane, false. <laughs> play a role. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, um, if you want to be grown, you're going to have to act grown. Right, you and have to that, pay some bills. That and part. you cry and, like and, Nigel. And, 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 and it's like, it's just a mutual respect. It, it would have to be, I'm going to listen to you, but at the end of the day, I know best. Mm -hmm. And that part is missing because even though we um, experience hard times with our parents being getting down on us, yeah, we're not as brittle as this generation. We can handle a lot. These okay. kids can't handle the mama, mama jokes. I feel like they can't handle it <laughs> because they're exposed to stuff so young. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Do you think, I would think if that was the case, it would desensitize them more. It has. But. I I feel like it has. Mm -hmm. um, when we were growing up, people would pass away. It would be our elders. Mm -hmm. um, they're 13 and 14 years old watching their friends get buried. So yeah. I feel like they, they do hold a lot of uh, trauma and different things that we didn't take on as kids. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that like um, <clears throat> sometimes adults doesn't put that into consideration? Is what I'm saying. Absolutely. Um, Nobody's perfect. Yeah, of course. Nobody's yeah. perfect. And the, and that's the part where you get to listening to each other. Like, so that leads to where is the disconnect? Social media. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's not real. Yeah. It's not real. <laughs> <For> real. <laughs> the way Red said it is like, duh, yeah. it's not real. <laughs> Yeah. But a lot of moms and dads and kids is spending their time on it to where they don't have that sitting on time. They're not mm -hmm. sitting and eating at the table together. Yeah. You know, so I feel like it's a big it's a big time consumption. Yeah. yeah it started yeah. with video games. Like these kids were staying in their room for hours and that was the, the thing. Christmas and birthdays, getting right. the new games and stuff like that, but it only took more away from the interactions and, and everything is so normalized. Nothing is, you know, there's more, no more empathy and sympathy because right. if I can get on social media and see all of these things, then what is it? That's real. Then what is it, right? Mm -hmm. This is so great, y'all. We already are at our commercial break. Don't go anywhere so we can continue this conversation. Thank you so much to our guests. We'll be right back. The Plug Network is ever expanding. Subscribe to our YouTube page and hit the notification bell for all updates. Thank you and stay plugged in. Years of experience with natural, carefully handcrafted products makes PK Powders your go-to for all skincare needs. Owned and operated by licensed esthetician Precious Kental, PK Powders provides a myriad of solutions to keep you looking good, smelling great, and above all, maintain your skin's health. Located 1930 Bishop Lane, Suite 101, Louisville, Kentucky, right inside the Watterson Towers building. The play is PK. One and we're back. I got you, Omni. He was counting down. I had the last number. You feel me? Uh, first of all, this has been a dope group to uh, definitely chat with today. I'm very happy to have had this opportunity. And I'm happy that everyone was free to come in and hang out with me and Nigel and Omni today. So we are going to wrap up our last segment and a couple other questions um, to see, you know, you know how 
well, I don't know if y'all know how I do. This is only like the third episode. But anyways, I like to detect, you know, a little bit of a problem, what could be a little bit of a problem, discuss it, and then look into some solutions or what are some programs or resources and things to help aid us in uh, our initiatives. It's my favorite word, initiative, this month. I don't know what it is, but it is what it is. So for my question, what can we do to push this concept of listening to your kids? What can we do? Oh, you've been tagged, we, Red. We start with Why you. are we tagging me? <laughs> <laughs> it's all about you. Um, I feel like, I don't know. Um, yeah, you do. <laughs> I don't know how to push that initiative. Like, I, by just saying it, like, bring awareness to the topic um, mm -hmm. of listening to your kids. Like, I feel like if awareness is brought to it by other children of my age or younger or older, um, it's brought and said and put like in reasons on why you should, then I feel like that would persuade some of the parents to start listening to their kids more, mm. a little bit more, maybe not, you know, fully, but like <laughs> taking baby steps. Baby steps, yeah. <laughs> Just look, I'm not the ladder. Well, sorry, well, sorry. <laughs> but I feel like if the, the topic is brought like big and vague, then I feel like parents would uh, take initiative to do so to do so all right good good i like that so mine is empower empower mm -hmm. empower that goes from organizations because there's millions of dollars being invested in what can we do about the youth but you're mm -hmm. not empowering the youth to do it mm -hmm. so um just with that being said that's why i say bosses and i let these young people know y'all being exploited straight up because if an organization could get millions of dollars on how to redirect your life you should have a say so in it you should have a say yeah you should be a director yep. of something you should be a leader of something mm -hmm. you shouldn't just be the participant that's right so, i like that i empowered. like that call them out demetrius yes, dang most definitely. Yes, most definitely. <laughs> give them kids that money y'all get Give the kids hey, money. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah. If you want them to do, it, yeah. <laughs> hey, if you want them to do right in the household, you give them allowances, just like you said. You get them in incentive. Incentive, yeah. So if there's millions of dollars on the table, I'm pretty sure if they got fifteen, twenty dollars an hour, because some of us out here, us, because I just got a contract with the Commonwealth. Period. <laughs> but uh, that's dealing with the detention kids, you know, due mm -hmm. to diversion. And I, I say that if you empower them in a way of financial literacy and putting them in a position to earn, then, you know, they box them up and they, they pretty much take the initiative to do right. So if you want your child to do right in the household, you give them allowances, incentives. Right. So just with this, if you want them to learn how to be a better adult, put them in the workforce mm -hmm. and turn them into entrepreneurs early, make Hope. them responsible. Early. Hope y'all listen. Oh man! Hope y'all listen. Hey, I listen to y'all. That's how I figured that for There you go. There you go. I love that. One of my ex best friends said the most like dopest thing ever to me, and was like, "Why didn't we just make businesses when we were in college? We literally had all the free resources." And I was just like, "Oh my god, you are so right." I was watching Shark Tank, and it was these chicks that made peanut butter. They was just mm. whipping and flipping the peanut butter in their <laughs> dorm room and was making so much money that Mr. Wonderful was like, y'all got to drop out of school. Mm. And I was just like, <laughs> crap. <laughs> <laughs> she was right. All the free financial literacy and learning and understanding your resources and what, the, what they are, where you can find them. Definitely in college. Grab a friend and give them a phone. Like, just start taking pictures of me. I don't care. Like, right. free content creators all mm -hmm. around you. People who are just trying to get up on their experiences with, with, with whatever they're doing. There's rooms everywhere. You can do photography stuff. I remember people was making films on campus. Like, ugh. I just love that you said that. And I just be like, can't watch Shark Tank anymore because... <laughs> If there's any kids in college, they're like, oh, I have to drop out. And I'm just. Ma Master P gave some advice one time. And who wouldn't listen to this fellow? Mm. So he said. Was he it off the film decisions? No, 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 no. We <laughs> this is almost like real life. He uh, more or less said that he graduated college in one month. Mm. And the key to success was consistency. 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 Oh. Because he, the question was asked was, uh, what does McDonald's sell? And. You know, what made them rich? Some people say hamburgers, chicken nuggets, fries. 
the professor said no. no consistency. consistency. You know the McDonald's. You McDonald know when you pull up, you finna get. I mean, not a not a uh, McFlurry. You're not gonna get that. Yeah, no. Imagine. Ice cream. She <laughs> that right. thing always there. But they consistent with it, so right. you don't even ask for ice cream. Exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but with that being said, it's anything in life, and not like me with this uphill battle that I'm doing, and I encourage every young person that. You know, me being a convicted felon, I didn't have a say. So I have a dog in this fight when it mm -hmm. came to youth advocacy. So mm -hmm. being persistent, consistent, definitely, I got my foot in the door and uh, I have a budget of $648,000. But I'm going to put it back in their hands, though. Yes. Like, you know, yes. I, yeah, you heard that, Nigel? Yeah. That's another job. <laughs> yeah. Most yeah. definitely. Because yeah. you got another bill to pay soon. Yeah. Most definitely. Most definitely. <laughs> I love it, y'all. We are dropping the gems in this episode, and I very much appreciate that. I definitely feel you on the consistency, being persistent. I mean, that's a black person's anthem, I feel like. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? Look up black person in the dictionary and persistent, consistent, brown and beautiful, melanin, right. popping, sunshine and glow. You know, you know, it's, it's a long definition. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right. Yes, Tamika. Do you remember the question? Because we was all over the place. Okay, cool. I was just gonna say delegating time. Mm -hmm. um, um, you make time for what you care about, and it you love and cherish your kids and care about their well being. Mm -hmm. Um, definitely make it time to talk to them and listen to them and hear them out. Yeah, because you never know. Right. Uh, I mean, yeah. kids is kids is they putting it out in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. you know so they're expressive yeah but if you give them a healthy outlet yeah you mm -hmm. gotta you gotta talk to them so that they don't it don't come okay. out and it's preventative and that's yes. preventative also for it coming out in an unhealthy manner because as well. mental health is real real it's trending now but mental health is is real that is correct i like i like your mention of that i actually thought about this in the last segment um when you mentioned that social media was a big problem and a huge disconnect um definitely having table time and stuff like you got to take that initiative and um and it is so very wor worth it and necessary like in my house we now have house meetings to just discuss stuff like what's on the noggin what's with our finances things of that nature um but it's a moment and like you said, a delegation of time to get all that stuff out, uh, to out of the conversation. So we are on the same page and stuff. Um, so I think that's a great step also. Y'all are doing great. Okay. Um, say, what's so, up? So, what's up, President? She got something to say. That's what it's about. Okay, so like going along with everyone about the social media, the being on your phone, being staying in your room, having meetings with your parents, sit down and stuff. Um, so my per take on that is um I would say first start with the, like the staying in the room on social medias and gaming and stuff. That also that comes from from experience. It comes from your parent being distant. Mm. So that ties into like You're spending like more time. So like, yes, basically you isolate yourself. I was that person. I was that person for about five years mm. because I never had the family meetings. I never had the have to sit down at a dinner table when we eat dinner. I never had the hello when I walk in the door or any mm. of that greeting. So it just made me feel like I am me and I, it's just me by myself. So like, that's what brought me to stay into my room. And then also, like, with the parents, they don't realize it, but they get to talking about their kids behind their backs and what their wrongdoings and um, what they're mm -hmm. doing to make them to frustrate the parents. And then the kids hear that, which makes them stay in their room even more. Mm -hmm. Just I'm just speaking off experience because, like, it just makes you feel as as a kid, it just makes you feel like, you don't mm -hmm. belong or yeah, as a human, you don't belong mm -hmm. or what am I doing so wrong that I'm not out there congregating or they're not right. bringing me out of my room or out of my isolation right. that it, nothing's going on, that I am keep isolating myself and mm -hmm. I'm just staying on scrolling on social media and I'm playing games and I'm on FaceTime and I'm trying to talk to other people so that I won't fall into that mental health, that depression, right. that anxiety mm -hmm. or any of that per se. So that's that's just what I'm saying on that. <laughs> Strong. <laughs> Kill it out. I love that. That is such... The, I love that. That is true. I've definitely been in my room and heard my mom and dad talking about me and I'm like, man. <laughs> but why? <laughs> 
Thank you so much. So we only got a couple minutes left. This is a great conversation. We got to do part two because we need to bring Latoya back as well. Tamika don't know, but she can't go nowhere. Like, I'm sorry. You got to be a part of the part two. You did so good. You know what I'm saying? So I want everyone. The other thing I was going to ask is about programs coming up to help kind of push this concept. And then what you're going to have to do, I guess, is just follow everyone. So that way you'll know what's going on. Um, so if anyone, we'll start with uh, Tamika. If you want to go ahead and plug yourself for the people. Uh, my name is Tamika Holly. On Facebook, on Instagram, it's Miss Flawless, M I S S F L A W L E Z Z. Um, follow me. Follow her. Follow her. <laughs> well, I'm Demetrius McDowell. I own an organization called Bosses Not Bangers as an LLC, but I also have a nonprofit, 501c3, Boss Not Bangers, INC. And right now, with the contract that I have with the Commonwealth dealing with detention, I want to subcontract any organizations or individuals up to $3,500 to bring any type of programming and curriculum in with these individuals who already have experienced the judicial system. And these are the ones that's hard oh, to deal it. with. These are our stolen car kids, mm -hmm. all of them. So definitely, if you have in, something to implement, I'm funding. I got the bag. Got the <laughs> bag, though. <laughs> Love it. Thank you so much. Oh, it's, it's free. What oh. you got going on? Oh, I wasn't done yet. I wasn't done yet. I'm Fred, OK? You know, follow me on social media. It's right there. You know, you see it. <laughs> um, that's my Instagram, by the way. Um, hit me on there if anybody wants to talk. I am open to talk to you all. I'm open to give advice on anything. Um, and my advice to you right now is just be respectful and watch what comes out of your mouth because wordplay is a M effort. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yes. I love that. And that's anyone, parents, anyone, you know what I'm saying? Because clearly Red got the T, all right? <laughs> Nigel, tell the people where they can find you. Uh, you yeah, can find me at any social media, Kansu Sage, K-H-N, uh, K-H-X-N-Z-V Sage. Um, or y'all can, I have my email, nmblac one at outlook.com. There you go. Rewind back. If you need any of this information, <laughs> my name is Amira. I'm here with the Dove Delegates. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. You can find me um, somewhere, but you can you can contact me, Amira, at DoveDelegates.org. Make sure you follow Dove Delegates on all platforms. That's Dove Delegates on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. All right. With that being said, great conversation, y'all. Let's say goodbye to the camera and y'all have a great rest of your Saturday. Hey, Mike check. <laughs> the Plug Network is ever expanding. Subscribe to our YouTube page and hit the notification bell for all updates. Thank you and stay plugged in. Years of experience with natural, carefully handcrafted products makes PK Powders your go-to for all skincare needs. Owned and operated by licensed esthetician Precious Kental, PK Powders provides a myriad of solutions to keep you looking good, smelling great, and above all, maintain your skin's health. Located 1930 Bishop Lane, Suite 101, Louisville, Kentucky, right inside the Watterson Towers building. The play is PK.